You're listening to Got Tech, the podcast with your hosts, Eric Geis and Nick Johnson. Welcome back to Got Tech, the podcast. This is episode 123 called 17 EdTech Tools to Get Ahead of 2023, part two. In this episode, we'll share 17 unique and fun EdTech tools in a variety of educational categories. Guys, will also talk about his experience at the 2022 Teach Better Conference and give us a sneak peek at an upcoming bonus episode of Got Tech. This is another episode you don't want to miss. Check it out. What's going on? I just got back from the Teach Better conference. It was an eight-hour drive. Uh, that put me to sleep, but the Teach Better conference was pretty awesome. Yeah, um, I guess I should probably, I don't know if I'm like the moderator for this little intro segment here, but uh, as we sit here today to record, you know, guys is just freshly back from that super long drive to what all I really know about it is that you've described it as the best conference experience that you've been to so far. And we've been to a lot of conferences, so I think that's saying something. What was, uh, what kind of made this one so, so great for you? So... When I went out there, I had no clue what to expect. I I know that I was going to know a lot of people uh, on the surface. Like, I know them from the internet. I know them from virtual PDs or from the podcast community or, you know, things like that. But I didn't really know them. I didn't know what to expect um, when I went out there. But I will tell you this much. uh, I went out there, and I'm not a guy for big crowds, like, in in small spaces and stuff like that. And this is something like pre COVID, but, uh, I went out there and it took me, you know, Thursday night, Friday until half day to really come out of my shell a little bit and, and start going out and connecting with people and, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I made some really awesome connections there and, and the networking part of it, they hit a home run providing so many opportunities to network with the other teachers that are like-minded everyone there i mean it's the teach better conference the whole goal is to go and teach better and it really encompasses the fact that you teach better when you learn from each other as professionals so i got a lot of amazing ideas a lot of people had a lot of things to share and this is a conference like i can honestly say that a lot of conferences we go to the end goal is for them to make money I mean, yeah, they want teachers to have a good time and stuff because, you know, that's how they're going to make a couple bucks. Or there are some conferences that are there to break even or something like that. I can honestly say this conference, it's about the relationships. I, I, I feel like it's more about networking. It's more about having a bunch of people that have a common goal in a common area and try to get the best of, you know, out of each and every person. So... For me, that's what made that conference so special. Yeah, that's cool. You know, if I think back about experiences we've had going to different stuff, and not just as podcasters, this is going back when we were just, uh, not just, but when we were only science teachers, that was always the best part. Uh, way back in the early days of, for us at least, going to the New Jersey Science Teachers Convention, you know, I remember some of the sessions that we sat in on, but most of what you do remember are those relationships and talking to people so it's nice to see that that was kind of the main focus of one of these things because you do often get caught up in so much of the other stuff and trying to attend as many sessions as you can but really it's about meeting people and i can i can say for sure like some of the things that have had the biggest ripple effects for us as a show and as teachers have been from meeting people and talking to people and all of a sudden now you have a relationship with that person and they can help you out with whatever comes next so that's really cool to hear um i also want to ask about the uh the presentation that you actually got to do which i believe was saturday of the conference because it's sort of our you know one of the one of the key 
or the things that we do best as a Got Tech team, that is the uh, EdTech Throwdown, which you did without me with uh, what we've referred to as a worthy adversary. And from what I hear so far, um, she was indeed a, a worthy adversary. Uh, Steph is amazing. I got to meet her Thursday night um, at the networking event. Uh, we were in this packed little space. I said, hey, I'm Eric. I think she said, hey, I'm Steph. And she kind of made fun of me because I was uh, awkward. Um, <laughs> she's she's very good at dishing out um, verbal punishment in a playful way. So um, Steph was amazing. Uh, I hung out with her a lot at the conference, and there, we had a nice little group together. It was, uh, I'm just going to go first names in the recap. I'll probably include their, their handles and everything, but I'm not well prepared for that right now. But Phil, Patrick, Ariel, Steph, Tara, Ruckman, um, you know, we had a nice little little group there. We, we did some, uh, you know, podcasting on the fly like we were down on the conference floor and I had my hand held and um, Steph took over which was awesome she was amazing at that uh, but yeah we had a throw down I really expected to go in there and get my butt kicked and to be honest with you I think I would have got my butt kicked if people was able to see and really dive into Steph's tools because she made like half of them and they're like these extensive tools that do a lot of amazing things where I just took everyone else's. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it turned out pretty well for me. Uh, it was it was definitely a surprise, but, uh, you know, Steph's a uh, lot of uh, appreciation for all the hard work that she put into her tools for, for sure. She's, uh, like I said before, she's an out of the box thinker and she sees a problem and she finds creative ways to solve them. And typically, without having to shell out money to an edtech tool to do it, she comes up with a solution using her bread and butter, which is Google everything. And uh, I will also say this. Uh, she did mention the fact that she does not use edtech. And uh, what she meant by that is she doesn't, I guess, use any specific edtech tool because every single tool that she had, even though it wasn't, they were Google based, a lot of them. That's still an ed tech tool, so I had yeah. to help her out with that. But, you know, on social media, she let me know that she's boss and and she she was very confident that she was gonna whoop me and I killed her with kindness and, you know, uh, it was just a good old fashioned ed tech throwdown. Yeah, so what, you know, you're beating around the bush a little bit. I'll say it, you actually, you beat her, which was pretty cool. Although it sounds like she definitely beats you in the, the larger ed tech universe here because you know she's the one actually designing herself these tools she needs that's some next level stuff that that we can't touch so you know however it went down regardless of the winner it's just awesome that she was able to go out and that you guys could team up in my absence and make this thing happen it sounds great i'm super jealous and uh you know if you do want sort of a little more of a you can tell me if this is not what it's going to be but what i would expect to be like a detailed recap with some specifics and some names and maybe some clips hopefully i'd like to hear some of these clips uh from the you know on the floor recordings you can expect hopefully a, a bonus episode maybe yeah it's going to be a bonus episode but it's going to be more than just you know the people i talked to and some of the experiences it's it's going to be what i really reflected on on my eight hour trip back like uh, I'm gonna be pretty honest with you about stuff that I learned about my, myself. I don't know why it's taken almost 40 years for it to, to get there. Um, but there was, uh, you know, I was able to unwrap me, unravel me a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm gonna point out specific people that really influenced me during this trip and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a couple spoiler alerts on, you know, what their message was. And I would strongly look out on YouTube because some of them have their, their presentations and stuff on YouTube and on their websites and stuff like that. And I would strongly encourage you to reach out to them and um, really pick their brain on Twitter and stuff. What was really amazing is you, you walk around and you see people that are super well known in the education realm. They've, they've spoke at you know, a lot of big time events, they've keynoted, they've won Grammys, things like that. I mean, 
I, I talked to, and I don't want to, I'll let this one be a little bit of a cliffhanger, but I, I had a good conversation, a couple good conversations throughout the, the conference with uh, one of the keynote speakers there. And uh, that was before I, I realized he was keynote, uh, he was a keynote speaker there, and he just blew me away. Um, he had a different way of presenting, so I'm super thrilled with everything that happened. It was definitely worth the eight hours there, the eight hours back, being away from my family. I I just feel like it, it gave me an outlook um, that was different, and it kind of recharged me because, as I mentioned before, I've been struggling over the last like year and a half. I, I know I mentioned this to Nick. I've been struggling trying to find the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I, like, I miss being in the classroom. You know, there's stuff about education that, that bothers me. But when you go there and you, you, you share some of the same frustrations and you learn how other people are dealing with that, you know, it really allows you to put your problems behind you a little bit. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share some of those lessons in the in the recap. I don't expect it to be too terribly long. And to be honest with you, you know, if I feel like I'm boring myself, I'm gonna probably cut it. So I'm hoping it's gonna be like a 10 minute to 15 minute episode. Yeah, I think it'd be great. And I, the honest stuff is always super interesting. So I think people can look forward to that. I'll also add in there, like when you have a event or a conference that you leave feeling energized, which it sounds like that's kind of what happened to you, whether it was the crazy long drive that you did by yourself or just kind of being there, whatever it was, that's the mark of you know a, a great event. So it's we're fans of uh, Teach Better regardless, but it sounds like their conference is the thing to check out. And if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll close this just by saying uh, thanks to Steph again for filling in. Thanks to you for going out there without me. And thanks to the whole Teach Better team for making it happen because this is an awesome experience. If you don't know, because we don't always announce this until the end of the show, there is like a mid-show bumper, uh, but this Got Tech, the podcast, is part of the Teach Better Podcast Network, and they have tons of, tons of awesome shows. So if you head to their website, you can check out everything that's there for a really great list of tools. And I'll add on top of that, what was cool about the Teach Better Conference is I got to meet a lot of those podcasters. And I will tell you this, uh, this group of podcasters, they're genuinely nice people. I mean, we have podcasts that are way bigger than ours there. And they actually, because, I, like I said, I was pretty reserved for the first day, day and a half. They actually came up to me and they were, they asked me questions. They wanted to know what our podcast was about and, you know, how we're doing and if they could help us with anything. So that was super cool. I mean, most of the time I was a fly on the wall and people constantly just wanted to know about you, wanted to learn about you. And anywhere you looked, you saw either a keynote speaker at a different conference you saw someone that is a power presenter meaning they go to conferences and they present two three four different topics there a book author or a podcaster all right and then what was cool is everyone was interme intermingling with each other uh if you were a teacher and that like that's what you felt comfortable with you had you know the ability to pick people's brains if you wanted to write a book if you wanted to be a podcaster if you wanted to be a presenter a keynote speaker and they were totally open with it so it, it was cool that the access the open personal access of all those different people were there it was pretty amazing yeah it sounds like it was super fun and you know perhaps in the the theme of this episode which is by the way if you, did, if you missed the title, a, a part two of uh, episode 122 on just a, a, a list of ed tech tools. This time we got 17, and maybe that's the theme of these is they're just fun. As I was looking back over the list that we put together in this in this part two, it's um, there's some really cool stuff here. None of them I think is gonna be particularly, you know, like for science teachers or for math teachers, but these things are awesome and i know you're gonna have a good time with them this podcast is a proud member of the teach better podcast network better today better tomorrow and the podcast to get you there you can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast now let's get back to the episode yeah so just remember that nick and i we always promote building your ed tech toolkit all right, that's really what we're about. We want you to find five to seven main tools and stick with those 
uh, and I really think they should be done at the district or building level. Uh, you should all be working in the same thing because that will make professional development easy where you could stay within those seven tools and it will also make budgeting for tools uh, also easy. But the ones that we're talking today, you might only, you might not use them at all, but you might only use them every once in a while. Say there's a, 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 a student that is really interested in history. Well, maybe there's this weird fact tool that you could share with that person and they can use it. Uh, these aren't going to be part of your EdTech toolkit, I don't think, but they could be there as a resource that, you know, might tailor to specific kids that will help them be interested in your content by meeting them halfway where their interests, you know, main interests are. I bet I agree. I hear what you're saying, but I can, I bet if you listen to all 17 of these and it'll, it should be pretty quick because there's not a whole lot of depth to some of them. So if you hang in there and check out all 17, there's going to be something definitely that you're going to save. I know as we were researching for this, I've already kind of bookmarked a few of these just, just to have around. And uh, one of those that I, that I saved just because it's, it's a pretty cool thing is the first one we're going to talk about called playphrase.me. Do you want to kick it off and explain this one to people? Yeah, this one's awesome. I, I often say that when people talk and they say something from a movie or a song or anything like that, um, I kind of finish the quote often. Uh, this one, playphrase.me, what you do is you type a phrase in and it will pull all the different movies that that phrase is in. All right, so it has a big database and it's, it's awesome. So what I did is I typed in, uh, you know, you can't handle the truth. And there is a big list of movies where that came from. All right. And you get to see five of them for free. But if you make a small donation, it would take you further than that. But I don't think you need to do it. Uh, so I typed that in. There's several different ones. But they have over 7 million they have over 7 million booked um, on this that they could pull from. 7 million phrases, which is kind of cool. So uh, how would I use this in a, uh, in a classroom? I like uh, doing leadership activities. So if there's a leadership phrase or a quote that you like, I would type that in, see if it shows up in any... any uh, movies and then you could put that on like a google slide and that could be one of your little points there so if your your project is to pull f phrases that inspire you it would be cool to see where they're located in a movie and then pull those out so uh that's how i would use it or it might be just something you do at the beginning or the end of every class period that kind of brings everyone in everyone loves movies so that that would be another way to kind of personalize your learning yeah, it's a great hook for, for a lesson you're doing, even if you're not looking for a specific phrase that you remember from a movie and you just want to see that clip. But like, you know, the way it works, it, like you said, is it'll if that phrase pops up in multiple movies, it just plays them all back to back in like this sort of pre-edited, you know, series of clips real quick. So you could just type in really any sentence or any phrase related to something you're teaching about even like a fringe connection and sort of let let these clips run through just to kind of pique everyone's interest and get the lesson rolling so like i said to me that's awesome i've bookmarked it i know i'm going to be back and the same can be said for this next one too it's uh the website is called neil.fun spelled n-e-a-l dot f-u-n and the this Honestly, we could have done a whole episode just on Neil.fun because, uh, as it calls itself, a tiny website on the Internet. I think it's a whole lot more than that. I think it's a huge website on the Internet, and if it's not one, it should be. When you go there, you'll see it's just a ton of different, I'll call them apps. I'm not sure if that's the correct word, but there's a bunch of rectangles with different things that you can do. Some of them you could describe as games. Some of them you could describe as, I would almost say like relaxation tools. Uh, some of them you could describe as just like little for fun things to do, little activities. Here's a couple examples. Um, from the first row, there's one called 
absurd, absurd trolley problems. And I'll just read you. It pops up a little image of a train with some people uh, tied down on the tracks like that old school cartoon thing where you tie someone to the train tracks. And beneath it is some text that reads, oh no, a trolley is heading towards five people. You can pull the lever to divert it to the other track, killing one person instead. What do you do? And you can select, pull the lever or do nothing. And based on what you select, it walks you through like what happens next. So it's sort of like a choose your own adventure thing. You could use this obviously a ton of ways to get creativity flowing as a, you know, maybe a writing starter for your class. And, and you can let your imagination run wild from there. Um, beneath that, in the second row of these apps is called Ambient Chaos. And if you've got one of these, it reminds me of an app that I use sometimes to help fall asleep where you can select different sounds to play in the background. You can sort of overlap those sounds. So there's, you know, a campfire sound, a wind sound, highway sound. Um, and they've got some weird ones too, like dentist, playground, casino, carnival, hospital, lawnmower and i think this would kind of be cool to help create some maybe ambient noise for your classroom like i do a class playlist and when kids are working we often play music that they select why not have this up in the background and play some you know some ambient sounds you could even have fun with it there's one called zombie invasion uh, if nothing else it might be a good talking point for that class period Another one of these that caught my eye is really simply called rocks. The whole thing is four oddly shaped rocks and you click and drag them on top of each other to try and get them to stay stacked up and they kind of will fall over. Sounds stupid. Just give it a try. You'll be hooked immediately. I've been playing it over here while Geist was introducing, uh, you know, our first tool a little bit. There's just, a, there's a ton of these things and, and I don't want to go too much off the deep end and list them out, but... You know, some of the other ones that caught our eye were, you know, your your date and it's it's birthday. Design the next iPhone is one of them. I haven't clicked on all these either, but just so much cool stuff here. Yeah, while you were talking, I was designing <laughs> an iPhone. <laughs> okay, cool. What's that? It, What's that one? It gives you the the iPhone shape yeah. and it gives you all the different possibilities that you could add to the iPhone and where you want them located. Imagine if you could build the iPhone to fit your needs. Like for me, I can't, I have little small, like I have big hands, fat fingers. I mean, for me to do a selfie is, is a challenge. So if I could put a, like a snapshot button anywhere on that phone or multiple snapshot buttons. So when I go to take a selfie, which is very rarely, um, I could easily do that, but you could design the next iPhone and present it. I like this one called Sell, Sell, Sell. It's about capitalism and some of the products over the last couple of years that have um, basically done extremely well in statistics about it. Like every two seconds, a bottle of Advil is sold or two bottles of Advil are sold every two seconds or something like that. Yeah, cool. Uh, it has all that. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. You could spend a lot of time. Uh, on that. So that was a good one. I'm going to get into my next one. Uh, this one is really not really educational, but it will save you time. Uh, oftentimes, I, the only time I really have to call somebody as far as a business is when they mess up. And it takes me 45 minutes just to speak to a human. So this site, what it does is it collects all the human numbers. So you could bypass all the, you know, if you have a problem with your iPhone bill, click this. Well, instead of that, it takes you straight to the operator. This site is called gethuman.com. So go there and type in. If it's a big company, it's probably going to have the number that allows you to get straight to the operator and, and speak to an agent right away. So check out that one. I don't think there's really anything else we need to say about it other than I hate when I have to try to figure out how to beat the robot. So why beat it when you have the cheat code? All I'll say is uh, Verizon, I'm coming for you because that's like the, they are for some reason the worst at trying to actually talk to someone. So I'm really pumped for GetHuman.com because can dodge all that stuff now. Um, another neat one here is called, uh, I mean, I guess if you pronounced it, it would be PrivNote, but it's more supposed to be PrivNote, I think, because it helps keep things private. P-R-I-V-N-O-T-E dot com. 
Uh, this is a neat little thing where you can type in a note, uh, whatever you want this text to be, and it does seem to be text only. And then when you click Create Note, it gives you a link, and you can copy paste that link to different spots. But the neat part is that this link, when you click it, it will show the person the text that is your note that you typed out, but it's only viewable one time. Uh, they call it the self-destructing note after being read. So to me, this is neat. If you're, I'm doing any sort of activity in class where I need to, I don't know, if it's a timed thing where there has to be a clear winner, like a first place person, this is a way to guarantee that there is only that one first place person because once this note has been read, anyone else who clicks that link will not be able to see it. It literally does no, no longer exists online. So it's sort of a neat way to keep track of that. It also made me think of some cool applications in the escape rooms that we put together. Yeah, that's the that's immediately where my head went. But right. it also reminds me of one of my childhood absolute favorite shows, Inspector Gadget. At the beginning of every show, he would get a note that said that stated his mission and after he read it it would blow up it would literally blow up and uh, you know he would always find some lucky way to uh you know escape that explosion but uh priv note prive note whatever it is dot com pretty awesome my next one is another one kind of like my last one where it just saves you time and headache we all hate how we have to use our email to sign up for everything so if you just need to get around the initial sign up for something, uh, there's a site called tempemail.org and it allows you to have a temporary email for like an hour. So you can use that email for an hour and then it goes away. So if you sign up for something, you sign up using that email, you confirm it by going to that email and then you have your account and then you won't get spammed. So temp email.org uh, for a temporary email address. I'm thinking this is how I'm going to go to sports arenas and get those blankets because you need, uh, you know, they have like a blanket or a duffel bag or a hat or a jersey or something like that, but you have to sign up and give them all your email stuff and all that good stuff. So this is a way around that. Uh, I'm coming to get that jersey. Yeah, I want to shake the person's hand who came up with this one. I used to play the game where I would just use my, whatever my normal email is, but just like change one letter or number just so nothing would actually come into me. But then they started doing the thing where you have to actually log in and confirm so that no longer worked. So this is the next place to go for sure. That's awesome. So some of these you're getting like some, some life hacks here in this episode too, separate from educational stuff, which is uh, maybe more valuable. And this one, you could, this next one, you can use all over the place, really. It's called uh, PSD Freebies, and that's at psdfreebies.com. Uh, what PSD Freebies is going to give you is a bunch of editable templates for all kinds of stuff, posters, flyers, things that have pretty on-the-surface obvious applications in your classroom, right? Because we do a lot of things where we want posters or... A flyer for an event that you're running around school and you can pretty quickly create a, a flyer but these days if you've noticed probably around your school flyers are getting pretty high level so are the posters that teachers are coming up with themselves and they're doing that with tools like this that have other graphic designers do all the hard work for you and just post these templates a lot of them you can pay for a lot of them you don't have to and this is one where you don't have to do it. So if you head there or just on their main page, you'll see a lot of these are not necessarily geared towards education. Like this one's called Crazy Friday Night Club Party Flyer. Obviously, that's not going to work for your classroom, but the design is super cool. All you have to do is change out the text in there to fit something for your classroom. And they've got the same thing for business cards and, you know, vertical banners that you could get printed and hang up if you if you need and there's just tons of really great stuff here so the the applications of that one are pretty obvious and it's just maybe an alternative to other really great tools out there like canva where you can find the same thing and um i don't know check it out might might have more of what you're looking for that's psdfreebies.com yeah, and, and my next tool is going to go right there along with yours it's kind of in the same avenue it's called beautiful 
dot AI. So this is another artificial intelligence. It's uh, it's not really geared towards education, but if you're doing a presentation, that could be geared towards anything, in my opinion. Uh, there is a freemium there where you could try it out. Uh, if not, it's 12 bucks a month. But think about this um, a little bit. Uh, beautiful AI allows you to choose either a presentation template or just a slide template. But furthermore, you can design your own using these little, uh, if you have a picture, you just drag the picture over onto the slide and it's going to automatically format the slide. It's like a, a snap click where it makes everything look nice just by you dragging it over there. There's no, uh, I guess, formatting after that. So it, it's just a smart way of, of doing it. And this is called Beautiful AI. I would strongly recommend just checking it out if you're one that, I don't know, if use the free templates to kind of just make that template for you and then keep that template and keep using it if it works for you. But it's just such a neat, clean design to it. And it looks very, very professional. So there's different graphs and things like that. Like you could put in a thermometer. And if you want to show 98 degrees, you can. there's a little drag on the thermometer where you can do an animation where that mercury rises in the thermometer to 98 degrees. So it makes a little animation there too. So there's a lot of cool things with beautiful.ai that you might want to check out. Yeah, I mean, this is this episode is driving me nuts because every single one of these, I'm like, oh man, that is awesome, and, and beautiful. AI is is another one. It's I feel like I'm just building a to do list. So the next week for me is 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 laid out. I'm just going to be checking out all these different tools because they look so cool. What I suggest that that you do, and really Nick and I should probably go back and do this, is just find the ones that you think you might use or that you could see yourself using in the future start a Google sheet and, and throw them in there and make your own like little ed tech encyclopedia there. Uh, if you just copy and paste our show notes, we typically have the link, the hyperlink there, and also a description of the tool. Uh, maybe that's something that we need to, to check out and maybe do because I bet we have a couple thousand of these that, we, that we've gone over in, in all our episodes. But you know, maybe that's something that we could do at some point in time. But a lot of these are very cool one-stop shop for something that is super simple, super easy to do. And it's not something that you need to push out. But if you give your students a list of resources that they could use in any project, I mean, that's pretty cool. It's going to save everybody time and it's going to allow them to make a better product. Yep, that's a great point. And we should, that's something we've kind of been talking about for a while but i think it's extra important that we start doing it uh because i'm going to add to that list now here's another one fake you.com very awesome um, fake you.com allows you to type a message of your choosing and pick a famous voice and it's, it's going to talk out that famous voice for whatever you text so this is uh you know sort of reminds me of the the deep fake technology that has emerged over the past five years or so and actually they they say that on their main page too so i guess that is what's happening here so it says use fake you deep fake tech to stay with your favorite characters and there's a lot of options so when you go there to create this audio file tons of categories games Internet famous musicians, narrator voices, real people, robots, science fiction, cartoons. I'll just click on cartoons. Um, and then just within cartoons, there's 554 different people. And most of these, let's see, a lot of these are going to be pretty well known. We've got uh, Barney Gumbel, Bart Simpson. Uh, oh, man, look at all Disney characters. Um a lot of these I don't know. Maybe I'm out of date on my cartoons. The other one I checked out was movies. So under movies, there's uh, 22 options. Schwarzenegger, uh, Chucky from Child's Play, Forrest Gump, um, Jeremy Renner, Jigsaw, Joe Pesci. You get the idea, right? Tons of different people, very recognizable. And then beneath it, you type in your text and literally there's a button that says speak and you can go through this whole thing. A um, lot of fun applications of this, if nothing else, just to do something a little bit unique and funny to start off your class period, engage your kids. I might use it to, you know, sometimes I do a lot of um, flipped classroom stuff and all my videos that the kids watch have me 
giving pretty much this typical introduction. I forget what it is now because I haven't recorded any this year, but the kids will comment by the end of the year that they get sick of hearing me say the same little intro like a thousand times over. It would be nice to change it up and maybe get this recorded. I'm not sure if that's an option, but to have you know Bart Simpson do the introduction to my videos in his voice rather than my voice just to change it up. So I'm a huge fan of this. You can also do, they have a clone my voice option, but I think there's gonna be a fee to that. So maybe worth checking out if this is something you're super interested in, but obviously gonna be a good time to play around with fakeyou.com. So that's the great thing. I'm gonna get away with uh, not having to clone my voice because I'm pretty sure Eeyore is on there, so it's pretty <laughs> close enough. So yeah, that's that's a great one. I mean, especially if, the introduction to your do now activity or your exit exit slip is a famous voice. You could always have a challenge on there at the end that whose famous voice was it? And like, I don't know, do some type of a gamification approach to that. I got another one. If you're, you know, sometimes you've, you've probably had the moment where your lesson ends a little bit early before the end of class and you've got that awkward five hopefully not ten but maybe ten minute period where you're like i got nothing else lined up here there's no homework for the kids to work on and you don't want to just give them free range because who knows what kind of behavior issues that's going to result in this is a great thing to kill some time at the end of class where there's nothing else going on you could let your students sort of shout out different characters and phrases and this would easily eat up that time for it. it's probably not super great that we're talking about killing time in class but Sometimes you guys know sometimes this happens and I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, right around the holidays or a sure. pep rally or something like that. I hated those 20 minute periods like yeah. as far as teaching wise, planning something for 20 minutes and then they go on a break. I mean, right. It doesn't work. This would be cool. All right, I'm going to go over the next one and then after that you could probably lump the next two together cuz they kind of fit in the same uh, genre there, but my next one's called Learn Anything XYZ. Me being a media specialist and having to do the research paper talk with classes all the time, this is definitely something that I would use to help them get a topic. Now, this isn't going to be their scholarly research by any means, but it will help them get their topic and kind of get a background knowledge on it. So, Learn Anything XYZ, you go to the website and then you can there's a little search box kind of like your omnibox in in google and uh you can put whatever you want there so earlier i was showing this to nick and he put in cryptocurrency and when you put cryptocurrency in there it gives you any definitions it gives you any of the latest articles uh on that or news those types of things all in there sometimes they give you audio clips and uh, videos stuff like that and it allows students to kind of get a basic understanding of what that topic is to see if they want to do a research paper on that or just to see what type of stuff is out there so this is called learn anything dot xyz yeah that's another one deserves to be you know written down from today's episode awesome awesome easy way to start off a research project and you're right, the next two go together, so I'll just kind of handle both of these. Uh, the first one is called Jitter, spelled just like you would think, jitter.video. And the next one is called SVG Artista, and that's svgartista.net, all one word. You can think about both of these as, um, you know, animations, we'll call them that, but your, your downloads are going to be as an MP4, so video format or a GIF based on whatever you want. But, uh, you know, I think Jitter describes it best. It's animated designs that are super quick and super easy. So some specific details here would be like text animations, where if you have a couple lines of text and you want them to sort of fly in or appear or sort of roll up from the bottom in a nice sort of catchy, flashy way, almost like a logo design kind of thing, you can do that. They have animation presets with some... Uh, you know, pre-designed rich animations that you just add in with one single click. There's no designing yourself. You can do custom animations. Uh, they talk about Figma imports with a Figma plugin. I'm not familiar with that, so I can't comment on it. But um, you get the picture here. It's these super clean animations that will bring images and text together 
in no time. So uh, this stuff, I mean, if you head to the website, it's a better, you'll get a better idea of what we're talking about here, but it's just super clean, neat little things uh, that you could use for your own educational videos or lessons, or, you know, I'm working on a, a little instructional template right now to walk students through the process of recording their own audio and I may use this to get a real nice sort of classy look to the whole thing. Uh, with SVG Artista, you're going to find something similar, although this caught my eye more as someone who, you know, as an educator, I spend an awful, you know, a lot of time trying to design logos, either for different class projects or different teachers who are working on different things or even just students, because sometimes they're working on a logo design project for like our podcasting class. Uh, well, with this, you can add in a logo or create one, but it's going to animate it for you. So it's going to take, and I think it has to be an SVG file. And if you don't know what that is, it's just a type of picture file. And you can usually download um, a lot of image editing services. You're, you can download them in the SGV format. So if you're not familiar, don't panic. Let's say you're a, a Canva user, that's gonna be an option there. So when, if you're in Canva, let's just say, and you wanna download an image, you can download it as a SVG and then upload it here. And it's gonna animate that image automatically for you. And there's lots of different animation options that you can play around with those. But if you imagine the different text or image pieces, it can sort of slowly fade those in, fade them out, have them sort of fly in from the side and it just does a real nice professional job of it. And of course, the benefit is it does them really quick and easy. You know, for us, maybe I'll take that Got Text logo and throw it in here and see if we can get a classy little logo animation going. So our logo is just, it's, it's more than just that static image. I really like, I think, SVG Artista is the one I'll check out first out of these two. So here's the million dollar question. Do you know what SVG stands for? Oh, uh, boy. Yep. Scalable something. That's all I got. Scalable vector graphics. That's it. Okay. So in this is the EdTech lesson of the episode. But all right. uh, JPEGs, GIF files, and PNGs, they're all rasterized uh, scale or rasterized files. So uh, with the SVG, what's cool about it is no matter, um, I don't know, it, the the image is going to remain crisp and clear at any res resolution or file size. So if you go and make it larger or smaller, because the way that an SVG is kept, it's based on all the little points in there where everything else is rasterized and can get blurry if you try to blow it up. A SVG file will never get blurry. Uh, but there you go. There you have it. Uh, my next one, uh, this should be quick and easy, but awesome. It's called vocalremover.org. And what that will do is if you have any type of audio file that has music and uh, vocals on it, it will separate them into two separate tracks. How cool is that? Super. I think it's yeah. awesome. So awesome. if you want a karaoke version of a song or if you want to you know, something that you could do this because it is uh, part of the common collective where you have permission to do this. You can take any version of a song and remove the vocals from it and just have the beat in the background. So that's pretty cool. That's called vocalremover.org. And I'm going to do another one since it's quick and easy. And because you did two to keep pace with you. <laughs> And this is called calligrapher.com, and it's C-A-L-L-I-G-R-A-P-H-R.com. Uh, basically, you could type in any sentence on there, and it's going to uh, change it to a, it looks like a handwriting calligraphy-style font. So I thought that one was pretty cool, especially if you're using it to, I don't know, do table cards at a sports banquet or academic awards or something like that, or you want the calligraphy uh, signature. Uh, I know when we give certificates for varsity sports, we have someone with really nice handwriting. Well, now we could just, before we print them out, we could just throw them, throw this in there and put it on the line and look uh, a lot better than my chicken scratch handwriting. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a that's a great one. Any place where you can go to get new and different fonts like this is good to know about as a teacher because you've definitely, uh, in your education career, spent some time looking for the perfect font, and this is a cool spot to go to find even more. Uh, the next one, pretty neat. We There's a lot of these things out there um, that are going to be similar to this. Many of them we've talked about. Uh, this one is called 360 gigapixels, and they do 360-degree pictures. So automatically your head probably goes to something like Google Maps, right, where you can do that street view. And this is going to feel similar to that, although I'll tell you, um, with 360gigapixels.com, the it's much clearer. The, the images you're going to see are super crisp. When you go to their website, you can see an example right at the top to get a feel for it. Uh, I'm not sure if this is like their default example, but it's the one that popped up for me. This is the uh, the Auckland Skyline 360 from what's called the Sky Tower. So I believe Auckland is New Zealand. Uh, so super beautiful. Maybe that's why they've chosen it as one of their featured things. But what it does is pretty simple. I mean, you can just click and, and drag around in a 360 panoramic view. You can look up into the sky. You can look straight down to whatever is beneath you. This particular one is from the top of some tower, so you're looking down sort of over the city of Auckland. What really impressed me about it is, you know, the zoom feature. So they have a little zoom in button, and I'm just actually using my two fingers to to zoom in um, just with the, the mouse pad, the trackpad. And this is where it really separates from, like, you know, uh, that Google Google Maps Street View you can get scary close. I don't know what kind of camera they're using to take these photos, but I'm zooming in on this this building. Uh, must be like an apartment building, and I can literally see people. Like I, you can almost see into some of these apartments. You can see so close, which doesn't maybe sound too impressive until you go and look at where the image starts because the original zoomed out version, this apartment building is just like, this tiny little dot in the distance here, I'm gonna pick something even farther away. There's this little hill in the background. It looks like maybe some sort of a historical building on top of the hill. You can like zoom right up in on this thing. The, the quality is incredible. And they just have tons, tons of different options to choose from all around the world. Some of them are historical and cultural. Actually, many of them seem to be like uh, just icons that you may wanna check out and how to use this tons of really obvious applications if you're teaching about a certain spot or place and time you can have students really explore and get a a good feel for a location and what it's like you could pinpoint different components of this maybe do a little scavenger hunt activity and have them find something with that really incredible zoom in it's going to take them some time to do that and you can maybe <laughs> exploit that as part of this um, it's just, it's crazy the quality here. They even talk about on their show, you can commission this website to do a gigapixel. I guess that's what makes it special here is these are gigapixel images. You could commission them to do a spherical gigapixel photo for you. Uh, this is going to cost you though. It's usually as part of like marketing campaigns or tourism, but I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, check it out for sure. 360 gigapixels.com. Really, really, really neat and super fun. Yeah, there's a lot of amazing applications that you could do with uh, pictures, especially 360. I think it yeah. just per like makes that experience so much more real. Right. All right, my next one is called BigSpeak.ai. BigSpeak.ai. Uh, you go there. This one's really cool because you could type, and it looks like it's free for up to 300 characters, but if you want to log in, you could get up to 1,000 characters. But what you do is you type any any uh, phrase or sentence or couple sentences that you want to convert to audio, and it will convert it to audio right there. My favorite thing about this is I can type in English, and I could have uh, the voice be English, German, French, Spanish, Chinese, or Arabic. All right, and after you're done typing it in, um, you could also add some AI audio transcription as well. 
in the same languages. But once you're done, all you do is you select the voice. So you could do a male voice, U.S. male voice, U.S. female, U.K. male, U.K. female, and then Australian male and female. When you're done, you just hit generate and it does it for you. And then it's a downloadable audio file and you put it where you need to go. So think there's endless opportunities here. You can put it in projects to just tell the story of your Google slide. You can also use this to communicate with par parents on uh, with language barriers. So there's just so many uses and applications for this one. I think it's super cool, but that's called Big Speak AI. It's just, it's amazing, all the stuff that's out there right now. That's another really neat one. Um, these last two, because we are down to the final two of this list, believe it or not, the, the time has flown uh, for us recording this. Hopefully it has for you guys listening as well. But these are not not to be skipped, man. And Competech.com is the one I'll talk about. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. This is just another royalty-free spot to download music. Why would you need more of these things? Because we've talked about a lot of them. Probably the top one being the YouTube Music Audio Library, which has awesome stuff. You know, if your kids are doing any kind of video design project or podcasting project or whatever it may be, they may want to add their own music or that may be a part of what you're asking them to do. But you're going to find issues with some of these sites where your school server may be blocking them for us. That's one of the problems we have with the, the YouTube audio libraries. The kids can't actually get to it. Um, so the more options you can have, the better. Also, sometimes your students are, will get frustrated flipping through. They just can't find what they want. We have right now a group of students doing a uh, like an NFL recap podcast, and obviously they can't use the NFL's audio because they could get called out for that and asked to take it down because that is not royalty-free as it's owned by the NFL, and they're going to take that seriously. So they had to go out and find something that sounds like the NFL audio to kind of give that like, you know, big impact sports sound. And they got kind of frustrated searching this out. So if you have a list of tools like this where students can go, the longer it is, the better so that you can help them with some of that frustration. So this is incompetech.com for this uh, royalty free, uh, free money wise as well, music downloads. That's that's another great one. And I'm going to wrap it up uh, with oldversion.com. So I had an old camera that I just found. It was one of the first digital cameras that I had, but I didn't have the driver. So I couldn't really use it. And I wanted to make sure I got all the files and everything off of it. So I went to oldversion.com and I found the camera. I found the driver for the camera. I downloaded it on my computer and then I was able to view all the files within that camera. So that was pretty cool. There are other uh, blast from the past things like Yahoo Messenger, MSN Messenger, AOL Messenger, those types of things. Um, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff. I will say this. This isn't one that you want to share with your students uh, because it has other stuff in it like torrents and some stuff that... I wouldn't recommend them having, but there are some things that I really like seeing on there. Uh, for example, I, I had a corrupt file in one of my video editors that I purchased on a, came with a package of uh, CDs and I, I scratched one and it was a corrupt file on my computer. So I couldn't use the whole program because I didn't have that one file, but I was able to find it on here. So there are some good uses of it. Just make sure that you have a good antivirus uh, software on your computer. Uh, take all the proper precautions and make sure that before you uh, download something that it is uh, virus free. Yeah, this is, I'll repeat it, this is not for your students. This is totally for the teachers out there, and I'll go a step further. This is like uh, primarily going to be nostalgia for all the millennials, especially the elder millennials, because you're going to find some stuff from like, at least for me looking through here, the first thing I typed in was um, something called LimeWire. I don't know if you used this when you were in college, but before all these things like Spotify and everything else, you know, our generation and we're in our mid to late 30s here by the way um we we were downloading music but it was all like illegally done and we were kids we didn't know at the time that you know the ups and downs of this and why it's bad to do but 
the this particular tool, LimeWire, gave my uh, college experience uh, laptop more viruses than I can count. I'm, I remember I, I downloaded LimeWire and was like, this is great. And I was spent like weeks just downloading all my favorite music for free. thought it was the best thing in the world. And then two weeks later, my whole laptop was dead because it was so like packed with viruses. What were some of the other ones? Napster? Napster came first. Frostwire was the other one. They've got all these things here. So if if nothing else, you may just kind of enjoy clicking through and seeing some of this crazy stuff. Yeah, all that stuff is screaming college. And uh, (laughs) I mean, I'm a couple years older. So I think the internet came out in what, 96? (laughs) Yeah. So the internet was only out five years. And then I was a freshman in college. Right. So that's just something to keep in mind there. But uh, this was a great list. It was a lot of them are super fun tools that you could probably find a use for maybe once in a blue moon. However, I think sometimes it's it's worth us bringing out these tools that do these unique things because every once in a while you have a student that has an interest that makes them very unique. And I think some of these, uh, like last episode, we did the thunder and lightning tracker. So every time there's thunder and lightning, it gets tracked on that website. I think that is something in some of the astrology stuff and astronomy stuff and all that can really hit home for some students. And if they can connect it to some of their content areas and work that into their projects, I just think that's an awesome honor opportunity to connect with kids. Yeah, and going along with that, for any tech coaches that are listening, try taking some of these tools that are just a little bit more on the fun side and, and share them out with your with your staff, with your teachers, even if you're not a tech coach. Just share it with your department, share it with your grade level, whoever you teach with. And you may find that it's some of these little things that can help to pull people in to the tech world. So neil.fun. It was the second one we talked about. I guarantee if you send that out to people, you're going to get some interest and and start some conversation. So th- this is this is a great list. Episode 123 is one to one to listen to and one to maybe go back and listen to a second time as well. With that, I'll wrap it up for this episode. If you are fans of the show, you can do us some favors. Subscribing is the biggest help. Subscribe on Apple, preferably. But you can find us and do the same on Spotify, Google, Stitcher. We're on YouTube as well. Uh, Search We Got Teched on YouTube. Uh, You can find us on Twitter. Find us there at We Got Teched or Nick Got Teched or Guys Got Teched also on Facebook. If you're a huge fan or if you really like this episode, you could write a review about it and let everyone know that helps us out a lot. Tell your friends about gottech.com. Tell your friends about teachbetter.com and the Teach Better Podcast Network. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Got Tech, the podcast. Remember to subscribe to our show and follow us at We Got Tech on Twitter so you can stay up to date with the latest episode releases, blog posts, product reviews, and PD announcements. You can also follow Geis and I individually at Geis Got Tech and at Nick Got Tech on Twitter or on Instagram at Nick Got Tech. Finally, remember to check out our website, gottech.com, where we post all our episodes, articles, and resources available to you for free. Until next time.